All right, everybody. My name is Chris Neto, the Market Development Manager here at Starin. I am today joined by Tom Roberts, who is the Distribution Account Manager at Jabra. Javed may be dropping in, and uh, he is in uh, he's in flux right now. And if he does drop in, he will be joining the call. But if not, you got a good one on one between me and Tom. Tom, how are you, sir? I'm excited to be uh, doing my first Starin Town Hall meeting. It's been a great relationship that we started back in February and it's been growing every month and, and looking forward to that continuing to grow. Sounds great. How is, uh, how has lockdown treated you? Uh, I'm getting very tired of this little office <laughs> that I'm in, but you know, one of the first things I did was, uh, you know, kind of logoize my office here. So it makes me feel like I'm back in, in one of the job or offices in either uh, Lowell Mass or, or out in Cupertino. But um, you know, it, it's been, for, for us at Jabra, I know I know this has drastically impacted a lot of businesses in in negative ways, but it's it's been a pretty um, positive thing that we've been able to help so many companies. Um, certainly on the headset side of our business, with call centers shifting from buildings to back home, but um, you know the video aspects of it are really beginning to come into play. So um, it's been busy, and I haven't had to try to find too many things to do. Well, you win, sir, for the best logo background setup of all the manufacturers that I've talked to because I don't think anybody's gone to the extent of putting the, the big um, display thing in the back that you have. That's pretty cool. So I, I just have to make sure I don't get on with a job or brand police because it's not 100% accurate. So. <laughs> <laughs> They'll forgive you. They'll forgive yeah. you because you get points for, for that. You get an E for effort on that. I, at least I give it to you. Well, sir, let's just jump right into the reason why we're here and the, and the purpose behind this uh, town hall. Obviously, we want to hear a little bit about Jabra, where Jabra is at, what Jabra has uh, brought to the table. Um, obviously, Panicast camera is what you have there. You have renamed it. It is now the P3, correct? Uh, and, um, yep, correct. Yeah, so I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. I would like to get a good uh, overview about What's new with Jabra? What's new with the with the uh, P3? Tell us about the product and give us uh, uh, a good once over. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. So kind of as you can see in the imagery here, you know, when people see a lot of the pictures that we have out there, they're like, wow, that that camera is gigantic, right? Because a lot of the you know the image that you have on the screen, but you can see here, you know, the camera compared to my iPhone is it a very compact camera. Um, what makes the, the Panicast unique in the marketplace is our full 180 degree view. Uh, today, you're seeing me in full 180. Generally, when I'm sitting in this office, I, I don't do that. And I'll show you, you know, what I do normally from this office in a little bit. But since, you know, power of the camera is in, is in the 180, I figured I'd start in that. How we do that uh, is with the three um, high definition cameras uh, that are in it. Uh, there's no moving parts in this camera, so we're not panning and tilting and zooming around the room. We've got three different images or three different cameras capturing the image and stitching them together. Um, when I say stitching, if I get up here close to the camera with my hand, you're going to see that stitching coming together. Uh, but when I get about 18 inches away from the camera, you're not going to see that stitching anymore. And, and generally, we're not going to be within 18 inches uh, of, of a camera. So you can imagine a few different applications for a camera like this being able to capture, um, you know, just the, the entirety of a room, especially uh, as we begin to maybe and get back into the offices. I don't mean to interrupt, but you have an odd shaped room. So it's, right. it's capturing the whole room, even in, a, in its odd angles that it has, which is uh, pretty impressive. Yes, and, and Chris, it's, 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 I'm really glad that you brought that up because sometimes people will say, well, you know, why is that line and why is the ceiling curved or, what, you know, why is that curved in the background? And when you have three different cameras coming together, our priority is on the people that are in the room. So if there was four of me or maybe my daughter came into the room and we were all sitting here talking to you, you might see some unusual angles on the wall in the background, but you're gonna see no distortion between the people. Sometimes with a fisheye type lens, one person's head looks gigantic and the person next to them, their head looks small, right? We're building all the technology to try to make the people look as normal as possible. Absolutely. In these scenarios. 
absolutely. So you're, you're this the, the peepery as per the, the the images that we have. You're talking about a full 180 uh, degree panorama view. Um, how does and I guess the my first question because I get to ask questions too, even though I'm the even though I'm hosting this, um, you know, how does the panorama view fit into the new, uh, I guess, the new work mentality where social distancing has come in into play? Yeah, so so let's talk about the workplace, first mm-hmm. of all. So um, in many cases, uh, uh, office buildings and whatnot would have certain buildings that or certain rooms that they outfit for video and cram a lot of people into them. And other rooms where they just said, you know, within the budget, that's not going to be a video room. That's just going to be an internal meeting room or whatnot. So, um, you know, with the rules of engagement changing as people go back to the offices, um, companies are going to have capacity issues in their meeting rooms. So um, the, the cost to outfit every room in a building with very expensive pan, tilt, zoom, multiple cameras, codec based video systems, is is not realistic for most companies right but to take a camera like this with which retails for around six hundred dollars a usb cable that comes with it um one of our speak speaker phones and perhaps a display right and put it in that room um we can now outfit that room depending on how big and expensive you want to go with the display right but stern's the experts on that um maybe 1500 bucks uh msrp you're outfitting a room um, now, that room that maybe used to just be a general meeting room uh, could be a space where potentially, you know, with a, a, a people limit of three, three, a max three people in it, right? One on this side of the table, one at the end of the table, and one on the other side of the table. And this camera is going to do a great job of capturing that view, just like in the image you're sharing there uh, on the right side of the screen now. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess what is... What what are the details? Because now I'm gonna because you know that we're gonna have some technology kind of nerdy people hanging out on the on the video that have not yet started asking questions. So I'm gonna ask the questions for them. What makes the Panicast camera special? And when you connect it to your speak, what makes it more powerful? Yeah. So so we talked a little bit about the 180 view, and that that's kind of the first thing that comes out of everybody's mm-hmm. mouth. Um, another thing that you're seeing right now that you don't know. Um, is Vivid uh, HDR. So I just shut it off on the camera. In my office here, I've got a little window here. It is about to storm and rain like crazy, but I do have some bright light coming over here. And this room is actually off of my closet in my bedroom above my garage. So it's super dark over here. When I turn that back on, uh, you should notice a softening of the bright light over here on the right uh, and, and bringing up the light over here. So if you think about a lot of modern workspaces, a lot of classrooms and schools where we're getting a lot of attention right now, you've got one giant wall with all windows in it and then the dark side of the building. So you'll get a lot of that witness protection program feeling uh, when you're in some of those meetings where there's you know bright light shining on the side of your head and darkness coming from over here. So HD, a vivid HDR is, is a way for um, uh, us to help control that. And then I'll just click another button over here uh, and you'll notice the camera uh, zoomed in on me. So when I'm in this office, I generally have our intelligent zoom feature turned on. Um, again, there are no moving parts in this camera. Uh, that was, I was 180 view. I'm sitting right in front of the camera. That was a really quick action for it. If I pop over here, the camera's going to take a moment to find me. Um, it's operating on facial recognition, but it found me right away. Most important thing it wants to do is that it is not tracking my voice. Uh, if it's not recognizing these faces on my paintings over here, which it very well might be right now, it will eventually bring me to the middle within about five or six seconds. And I should have put those down because it's not happening, but I promise you it would normally happen. <laughs> so when I come back over here, um, it's going to take a moment uh, to again, find me, center me. Uh, If my daughter were to walk in the room and sit here next to me, it's going to find both of us and it's going to center both of us in it, right? Intelligent Zoom is trying to figure out how many people are in the room and make it as most as a natural view to it. And is it instantaneous? I wish it was. No. As I was talking there, how many seconds might have ticked off, right? Seven to 10 seconds before it put me back in the middle because it really wants to make sure it's, it's analyzing the space around me. Yeah, that's key to an ed tech kind of situation where a teacher is going back and forth from whiteboards or if there's any old school people, chalkboards, 
uh, back and forth to the desk and, and the can, uh, the, the, the can, the camera can pen and tilt and go around uh, digitally and find the person, you know, building in the AI into the camera is a big plus uh, a lot. Uh, you know, that is one of the key features uh, is the, is the intelligence built into the camera as opposed to it just being a straightforward dumb camera, I guess. I guess. Yeah, it, w w one other thing to touch on there is since we are doing facial recognition, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, applications like Teams, there are all kinds of different software applications out there that are interested in tracking people, right? How many people are in a room? How many people are in a space? What are they doing? Are we, is this room designed for 20 people and we only have two people consistently in meetings in it? So um, we can turn Facebox on in video if you want. It's a little distracting and annoying. So I, I usually don't do that in a demo, but it, this camera will integrate with other software platforms to track it, right? Because generally that software just needs an input source. It needs mm -hmm. information. So the Panicast camera does a great job of capturing that information for anybody that's in the artificial intelligence business. And I see we do have some questions starting to come in. They're starting to pop up. So let's start with uh, Daniel King's uh, question, which how does the camera handle external microphone sources? And is there a native interface for syncing the audio and video? So um, the camera itself has two little microphones in it, but we at Jobber do not like to talk about it. Um, it's in there as a feature that came uh, pre Jabra acquisition um, from Altia because they had some requests on it. We do not recommend using that camera um, because it's, um, there's no echo cancellation, there's no noise cancellation. You're not gonna get really good performance. Um, as far as any other external microphone, we've got a number of partnerships that we have with different vendors, but generally, you're going to be hooking up a laptop. You're going to have some sort of compute in the room. You're going to have some sort of solution packaged up in the room. And this camera is simply just an input device capturing the video in the room. Um, I'm not using it right now, um, but what we generally, as Jabra, sell it with is one of these little speak uh, hockey puck uh, yep. speakers. This is a 750. This one is full duplex audio, and two of these can be linked together um, in a larger room. Um, so as far as integration with other um, audio applications, it's really, is Teams capable of it? Is Zoom capable of it? Is BlueJeans capable of it, right? Mm -hmm. What's your video input and what's your audio input? Sounds great. All right, next question comes from Aaron Peterson. What kind of connections does it have? You mentioned USB, but does it also have HDMI out as well? So the camera itself needs to connect via USB. Um, we do not have uh, HDMI directly from the camera to a monitor or display. Uh, we do have a hub um, that we sell that's Jabra branded that does have an HDMI out on it. So um, if you could envision, we'll, we'll say a meeting room, right, uh, with a television display, uh, this hub would plug into your laptop and then the camera and the HDMI um, would be would be plugged into here. There's also USB, there's Ethernet, there's USB-C, A, and B on here. So, um, and then we've got a, a number of approved partners. Targus makes some some accessories as well and converters um, that work very well for some of those things. So we can, you know, if you've got specific applications, um, we can we can kind of show you our compatibility guide. And uh, you know, when you're talking about accessories and parts like that, I know that we carry the uh, Heckler mount for the wall, for example, because you Correct. obviously want to install it and want to put it in a conference room. It's not necessarily just something you're going to put on a stick and on a table. If that's what you want to do, that's more than uh, that. That's more than fine. But Heckler is the, the the product that we carry that makes a specialty mount for the uh, Panicast, uh, which is it. For the for the people that are wall mounting it, it looks pretty slick. It's very clean for those that are concerned about extra wires and stuff like that. So the next question comes from Sean Watts. Sean wants to know what happens when there are multiple people in the room and someone moves. Oh, sure, okay. <laughs> great, great question. Love it. So uh, in this scenario, we're in a we're in a room and we've got intelligent zoom turned on. Uh, let's say there's three of us in the room sitting at a table. Uh, the cameras already centered the three of us into the view. If I get up and I'm talking and I wander a little bit further out in the room, maybe over towards the windows or towards the corner, I just need to take a break from sitting and lean against the wall. The first thing the camera is going to do is it's going to pop out. It's going to say there's either somebody else in here 
or I need to go wider. So it pops out to the wide and then it's gonna take me over here and the person that was sitting over here and it's gonna center, it's gonna make the most natural centering that it can. It operates on algorithms that are kind of recognizing this triangle right here between eyeballs, nose and mouth um, and does its best job to do that. Um, one other um, thing I'll add in there is intelligent zoom is optimized at 18 feet and less. So we're not talking about putting this in a massive auditorium, you know, at a, at a major university and it, and it detecting people moving around up in the back of the room. No, for that, it would may, maybe be roll at its widest, just yeah. getting a kind of a panorama shot, but. Uh, yeah, I, yeah it, I can... it would show the whole room, but you're not gonna get a lot of, lot of activity out of intelligent zoom in the back. We gotta, we gotta change it with, Question from Chase McLeod, which I don't know if I want to answer that. Uh, it's my camera. This this wonderful Panacast camera that I'm using here is making my hair look good. Thank you, Chase. Ah. <laughs> How's mine, Chase? <laughs> Yours looks great, too. <laughs> Silvery. All right. Um, let's uh, go to uh, a, another question that came in. Um, this one here says, um, where did it? Oh, my God. Marketing materials, people want to know about marketing materials. Where can we find the information about uh, Jabra's um, gear, right? I'm sure yeah. there's, you obviously have a, a consumer division, you have your professional division, you have your UC division. So where can they find this information? Usually I save this to the end, but it kind of popped up here from somebody. No. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. So we've got a, a world-class channel partner program. Mm -hmm. um, it's a relatively, if you're not current, if you are currently, uh, a Jabra and Panacast authorized partner, you go to onezone.jabra.com. Mm -hmm. We've got an amazing uh, marketing assets uh, arena there that we do our best to keep up with. Mm -hmm. um, and then myself, I work with Marlene Kuby, uh, Marlene and Amy, uh, and they have access to anything we want. So if you're looking through the stuff on the website within one zone and you don't see what you need, just a simple little engagement with us and, and we can probably dig it out of somewhere. And that, I mean, we, we went obviously on the marketing side, so let's go, because we always have to touch on the nerdy side. Uh, as far as uh, sales engineering or help with that sort of stuff, that's where they go as well? Uh, absolutely, but we also have, you know, there, 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 there's enough to be dangerous on the website, um, but we, uh, within our collaboration team, we're led by Javed, who unfortunately wasn't able to join mm -hmm. us today, but um, myself, Gina Spencer, Frank Cousins, and Alex um, are all... Uh, available for our channel partners and even you know if you're bringing your customers into conversation uh, and want somebody to come in uh, we're kind of the front lines as far as Panacast and Speak go uh, and helping them understand what's what solutions are going to be a good fit for us uh, and we're going to be the first ones to tell you if we're not going to be the proper fit right because we don't want to set ourselves up for failure uh, within the particular opportunities. So Going back to the history side of it, because a lot of people know Jabra from the audio side of the business and now with the inclusion of Panacast, how is that synergy going? How is the next five years projecting out? Because people are very interested, obviously, in companies that are combining the forces of audio and video in a UC space. You guys jumped in, you know, not only from, from the headset and speaker world for the business, but yeah, well, your well it we made a lot of assumptions that were a little bit wrong in the beginning, to be quite honest with you, right? Um, we thought that a whole bunch of uh, channel partners out there that were very good at selling headsets were just going to be able to turn around and sell cameras, right? Um, and it whole, really whole different was, world, man. <laughs> was really not the world they lived in um, and, and was very difficult for them. So, you know, one of the reasons I came here... Um, was because I've got a little bit of video background, right? Jabra recognized that headset sellers aren't good at selling cameras. So we began bringing in a whole new people with a different way of thinking. We brought in a new distribution partner in Starin, right? That, that understands that business that can bring us into, um, you know, new, new people and dealers that have been in this environment for a long time um, can help us recognize where the opportunities are right because we don't know where they all are right we we have a lot of call center people calling us and order headsets all the time but how do we convert that company to think about video within within their business so um over the next five years you know i don't think i've got a five-year plan yet um but 
Uh, I am very confident that in the extreme near future, you will, you will see more than this being on our portfolio. The, Ladies the and gentlemen, pandemic, that's, what we, that's what we call a foreshadow. The, the pandemic <laughs> has <foreshadow>. hindered uh, <laughs> development, uh, uh, R&D, uh, QA, all those types of things. Um, so Tom, be on the lookout. We, we appreciate the brutal honesty there, and that's a fact. Uh, it, 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 that's just the way it is right now, and it's understood. There's no, no need to, uh, to apologize. Appreciate we that. We were an audio company. We bought a video company. Stands to reason those things should eventually come together, right? Yeah. And, and probably bigger and better than yeah. obviously than where you were a year ago. It just keeps moving up. So that's great. Uh, we have a question from Sean uh, Watts again. What is the MSRP on the camera? So the MSRP on the camera is 895 US dollars. However, we have a promo in place um, through the end of September. So through September 30th, it has been reduced to 595 MSRP. Are you putting um, together promos with the speak as well? The speak um, has not, but we do, we do have some bundles yep. where if we take them all together, there is some discounts that come on the, on the speaks and the accessories as well. Um, and then just standard discounting that's out there. Um, deal registrations, an additional 10% off uh, public sector customers. So education uh, or uh, state, local, federal automatically get, an additional 10% off. And then when you deal reg a public sector opportunity, you get an additional 15% off. So, um, and, and, you know, we've got a, an army of account managers that are ready to, to work with you on opportunities. Um, while this panic ass pricing has been extremely attractive, you know, we know there's certain uh, verticals and types of customers that, you know, the, the, the everyday price is never good for them. So, you know, we're certainly willing to work with everybody. What you said, vertical. You said the magic word. There is a lot of people, uh, out, you know, on the call here that are that are interested. What are the verticals that this, you know, one hundred and eighty kind of view appeals to? I mean, yeah. So, so, so we were originally just kind of marketing it to commercial and enterprise for use as a huddle space camera. Um, and boy, did did COVID step in and, and slap that strategy, you know, right in the face. So, um, our, our customers have really helped us change that thinking. Uh, over the last uh, four to six months, right? Education by far is the leading edge for us right now. We have probably shipped close to 20,000 cameras since, uh, since June as schools uh, began putting their plans together um, and we're way behind. Uh, I see inventory coming in as a question. So it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We're, we've been, we've, we've uh, doubled manufacturing over the last couple months. Uh, we're coming out of the backlog situation over the next two weeks. And as we hit September, unless we get like a, another massive rush like we had in July, uh, availability should be better. Um, but education specifically, you know, it's not specific to K through 12 or higher ed. I know I've got some images of Mark and Sherman a little bit here. Um, the flexibility of being able to take this, a speak and a laptop, maybe putting out a moving cart in a classroom and have teacher view classroom view or a uh, hybrid view uh, of what's going on uh, in a, uh, there we go. So you'll see in the upper left, teacher view, um, hybrid teacher classroom on the upper right there. So kids at home can see the teacher standing in front and the kids in the class, or we've got classroom view, right? So depending on the scenario that we're talking about, um, let's go with teacher view first. 100% virtual school district, but we're allowing the teachers to be in the room. As a teacher, I can freely move about that room, use all the props I'm used to using, and the kids sitting at home looking at me or seeing in the, me in the environment I'm used to, used to being in. Um, uh, hybrid teacher view, we've got teacher kids, the kids can kind of see both of, you know, best of both worlds what's going on. And then classroom view, I'm a teacher that now has to cover classes in multiple buildings because we're, we're spread out, we can't do as much, we can't be all face to face, we can't have as many people in one space me as the educator, I can see all the kids in maybe four different classrooms around our school district. And I can see if they're raising their hand, falling asleep, laughing, talking, shooting spitballs, right? So um, this has been the number one hottest. And then the other thing is, you know, it's very easy to take this and put it in my backpack and bring it home with me. So a couple of days a week, I might be in the school, a couple of days a week, I might be home. 
higher eds uh, catching fire as well. Uh, and then things like, you know, house of worship are built is building a little bit. Um, however, you know, I, I know from talking to you guys, we've seen them as early adopters in technology along the way. So many of them already have you know, pretty, pretty good uh, video and audio solutions in place. And we're starting to see enterprise um, and upper end commercial beginning to think about what they're going to do when they can get back in the office. So our enterprise and, and high end commercial reps, you know, on our weekly calls are, you know, between now and you know, three months ago, it was crickets. Right now, few conversations a week with the you know with the customers they're working with, saying, "Yeah, we gotta we gotta start planning for four to six months from now." Yeah, you can definitely see on, on the enterprise side right now they got a they got a lot of rethinking to do because those you know those 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 huddle spaces that were four people now have to sit two or and, one. And, know, and, and, and how many? how many are going to continue to use the same amount of office space? They may have, you know, we just did a huge um, uh, experiment and we sent everybody home and we tried to run our businesses exactly the same. Some are doing extremely well that way. So they might not be going back as much. So you might begin to have um, people within those organizations looking for a more high, a higher end solution than just their laptop camera and their laptop audio that they've been using. Yeah, it's 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 weird because it's it is it it has become COVID has actually uh, engaged the the largest work from home experiment in the world. Uh, for one, I think there's metrics that are being developed now based on what people are seeing. Uh, it's unprecedented. Uh, things that we did last August don't make sense compared to this August. There is no historical data unless there was technology available during the Spanish flu. And if you guys have it out there, I challenge you to please. Send it to me. I'm interested to see maybe a paddle boat or something, but there was no technology back then. So we have nothing to compare uh, uh, it up against. Um, are you guys, you, you said the work from home. Did people take their panic tests with them? Is, is um, that, I mean, are you seeing it come to the house? I can see online technical trainers that have been previously in a training scenario, doing technical training, now bringing it home, setting up a, maybe not a, an electronic whiteboard like I have, but maybe some sort of whiteboard and walking back and forth doing training. I can see online uh, speakers and presentation people. Uh, the, obviously yeah. the live events industry is taking a hit. So a lot of these people that were basically on the speaker route at these live events and seminar speakers are setting up shop in little mini studios at home. Is this a solution there too? Yeah, well, I can say for 100%, everybody at Jabra took their Panacast camera home with them and, and use it every day, right? Um, but yeah, so things like, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head with it. anybody who's used to speaking to audiences and not sitting right here in front of their laptop, right? Uh, health instructors, uh, yoga instructors, you know, my niece Megan's using one um, because she's, she's, she's a yoga instructor. Um, it, it does a really good job of enabling somebody to go into a space in their home and repurpose it and capture that entire space without any distractions of things moving around. Um, and then also, as I showed you guys earlier, it, at the click of a button, I can have intelligent zoom on or I can turn it off. So uh, I may want to show the entire room for a little while and then halfway through what I'm doing, you know, come in and sit down for a little bit and, and put the zoom on and, and do that. So um, We've, we've seen that, that that type of business would be considered more commercial business on our side. Um, and we have seen what we would consider run rate business, you know, the, the one to 20 camera order yeah. definitely begin to pick up as the summer came along. It was non-existent you know, February, March, April. Right? When we go off the air, remind me to talk to you about, I have a Taekwondo instructor in the house who could uh, possibly use the ability to have something that tra tracks him around or is why yeah. to catch his kicks and around his kicks that he's been doing. Not only that, but he's also a drummer. At least my, my son has been taking uh, you know, online drum courses during this time and online karate classes. It's, it's amazing. And anybody that likes to move around, I'll be sharing, you know, a uh, post event, you know, hopefully a video that you guys can push out or post somewhere where they can come and see it. But that those classroom images that I showed you, I was able to get back in there yesterday and I did a few two minute, five minute, 10 minute snippets where I'm moving around the room talking very naturally. It's very difficult for me to sit still 
and talk, especially when I generally have an audience. We've been doing a lot of it with, with what's been going on, so I'm getting better at it. But my preference would be to be walking around while I'm answering these questions. So the camera does a good job for people who need to move. Well, it's good to see that you have your seat belted into your seat and that you get up. <laughs> well, we have two more questions before we end this. Uh, they're both kind of related to the uh, to, to mounting options. Uh, th yep. th these two questions are going to come in from uh, Greg Raphael. Uh, can you please review the mounting options? And so, his other question is, is there a plan to – okay, well, let's talk about yeah, the no, mounting I, yeah, options in, first. And I can see them, so they integrate the camera and soundbar. So this is our, um, our Jabra branded wall mount. Uh, just screws into the wall, and it's got a standard 20 millimeter thread uh, count on it, right? Very industry standard. Yep. And then this one is mounted on the telescoping table stand. So these are the only two Jabra branded ones we had. Chris mentioned Heckler. Um, we've got a very large company that we deal with that kind of revolutionized picking people up and bringing them places. They wanted uh, this camera mounted in between two displays, right in the middle of them, right where kind of the black letter boxes in the bottom. So Heckler developed one that's on there. Mm -hmm. We're considering either developing ones that mount onto um, the rolling carts that would have a display on it. Um, you know, there's various different kinds, so it's kind of challenging for us just to come up come with a one size fits all. But Dave Jakes, our our product manager for Panicast, is working with a bunch of different companies to try to come up with more mounting options for the camera because a lot of people love it but may not be able to put it in that environment that they have. And then as far as integrating um, camera and sound together, um, pay attention to the newswire somewhere around mid-September. There you or have it. Maybe, or maybe a little later than that. I don't know, <laughs> but um, somewhere in the near future, pay attention. We'll, we'll, we'll sit and watch anytime after September. How's that? Cool. We have one last question coming in from Steve Cox. Steve wants to know, can the camera go in a tighter shot uh, if you don't quite want that wide a shot? Is that the tightest? The sh like right now you're working off a tight shot. Is that the tightest shot or can it go even further? All right. Let's see what we can get here. There you go. Live demo. Okay. That's pretty. That's about as tight as I can get. That's pretty tight. I need to. I would need, it's on top of my monitor. So understood. Steve, I hope that answers your question. He went, he went full zoom on that one. And how do you so control that's that? Full via, zoom. That's via an app that is built. That's, that's downloaded. Yeah, this is a, this is a secret internal uh, app for being okay. able to do demonstrations for us, but we do have Jabra direct and Jabra express. That's a great question. Actually, how do we manage these things? Yeah. So Jabra direct is a de desktop application. The difference between what I'm using right now and Jabra Direct for the time being is when I make the settings changes, I need to, the camera needs to reboot quickly. And it takes about 10 seconds for it to reboot so your video goes away and comes back on. It will eventually be instantaneous within there. Jabra Express is more for managing multiple devices. So if I'm rolling out a thousand cameras across an enterprise and I wanna push um, certain configurations and changes to them, I would do that through Jabra Express. Awesome. So that's all your software updates. That's basically your management software to manage everything, to send updates, right. to, uh, to yeah, track, it's, keep inventory. You stuff. might want to invert the camera, right, in a certain application so you can turn it upside down, right? With you, the, you can make the cameras be upside down in the imagery. You can have different sorts of blending on the, on the cameras, um, and that's where you would turn Vivid HDR on, Intelligent Zoom, um, different things like that. Wow, Mark. Is, does not have the presentation slide up, uh, but we are. <laughs> it looks like it locked up on him. But what we are going to, uh, and, and by the way, that is Mark Decker, who is our producer for this uh, show. Um, once we get that up, uh, we're going to announce that we have prizes. Typically, we've been doing uh, gift cards, but with Jobber coming on, Jobber says, I'm going to get you guys product. So for the first winner, um, this was selected in the randomizer, Mr. Decker has sent this to me. The winner of the Panacast camera is Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah, Daniel King. If you are not here, uh, Mr. Decker will be in touch with you and he will send over that uh, the information to get you the Panacast P3. And we also have a Speak 710. And the Speak 710 winner is, according to the randomizer that Marcus sent me, is Mr. Aaron Peterson.
Congratulations to you both. Congrats. Thank you, uh, Panacast, for providing the prizes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. But before we go, Tom, can you please give us some information as far as where we can find more about where we can find out more about Jabra and the Panacast and all the good things that we talked about today? Yeah, so, you know, Jabra.com is always a great place, but since you guys are channel friendly and partner friendly, onezone.jabra.com is there. If you don't have access, it will be an open book test. You will not be able to get into it. Uh, it will prompt you to fill out. We, we've got two different forms. We've got a Jabra authorization form and a Panacast addendum. Since Altia came in as an acquisition, we had to do an addendum to the mm -hmm. existing contract. So two quick forms will approve you. You'll have access to it. My email address is easy, troberts at jobber.com. You can always send me uh, an email there. Uh, and, you know, we're just, we've got a team of folks that are really eager um, to help help people out. We know you, you, you're all capable of putting in some pretty, pretty advanced audio visual solutions um, for various different um, types of environments. But universally, there are rooms in those buildings, there are rooms in those schools that have nothing because cost was a huge barrier in the past, as I mentioned earlier, for less than $1,000 MSRP. You know, we can video enable just about any room. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate Jabra giving us a, uh, a, a great presentation on uh, all the all the little things that we probably have missed because you know what? We as AV people miss one info come and we're lost. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> Everything just shut down. Now we don't, yeah. we're, we're rediscovering HDMI all over again. It's, it's crazy. It's the world we live in. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Um, appreciate the time. David, uh, who did not, uh, was not able to attend. Uh, we'll, we'll catch him on, on the next. A absolutely. Uh, stay tuned, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we do have a September town hall coming up. Uh, we can't say who it is because it's going to be a mystery surprise guest as to who will be joining and I will just uh, leave it at that before I get myself into trouble. And uh, uh, I, I would like to leave a little air of mystery there. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Decker for producing uh, the show and uh, Tom again, once again, for joining me, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Netto. I am the market development manager at Starin. You can find everything you want to know about Starin at Starin.biz. Uh, please uh, give us a like, a follow on the video and uh, double check our social media accounts on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all the funny places that you guys would love to go and uh, check out your daily news. You can find us there too as well. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Thank you so much for watching the Starin August 2020 Town Hall.